say you do a tattoo and you love it and you post it on social media, right? And you, you, you know, your friends and your, you know, and people are just like, hey, that's beautiful, Matt. Oh, I'm so happy to see you working again. You haven't posted a tattoo in a while and you're feeling good. And then, you know, because we all need that self-validation as artists. Yeah. And then you just get somebody that's just like, nice try. Keep trying, bro. <laughs> right? <laughs> and you're like, you're like to your soul, right? Like no matter, you have all these good comments and one guy is like, Man, so keep close. Keep trying. Right? <laughs> so yeah, so close. So I have, I have recently learned the 80-20 rule. Are you guys familiar with that? Hello, people of Earth. This is Hip with the Tattoo Guardians podcast. This is part two of Pet Peeves and Joshua wah, Carlton. Shit. <laughs> hey, what's up, people of Earth? This is Hip from the Tattoo Guardians podcast. And this is Pet Peeves, part two. And we've got Joshua Carlton with us today. So we get to. <laughs> I gave them back. Anyway, stay tuned. It's going to be a fun episode. Brothers and sisters, we can't thank you enough for all your love, your support, and your faithfulness. It's been brought to my attention. If you really want to do something to bless us, to thank us, apparently simply hitting the like button on YouTube would be more impactful than what I ever knew, let alone subscribing to us on YouTube if you're not already. And then over on Spotify and Apple, please leave us a review. All of your listening in your comments to us mean the world to us. Um, and do us a favor and just hit like on YouTube and leave us reviews on Spotify and Apple. And we're going to continue to serve you with our whole heart. Thank you so much. Yesterday, man, was like, it was a Monday. On Mondays, man, I'm like all day classes, right? Okay. Meetings and shit. Sydney, you know, ever since Mike became the uh, apprentice, he stepped away from his position at TBM and just kept this position at the Guardian's full-time apprentice. So I got a girl named Sydney. She ain't no Mike, but she at least can push the right button so I can teach. She's on vacation. And so Mike filled in for her yesterday, which was a great reunion to have Mike back at TBM. Brother, he served all day. Like, it came to my house around 11.30 a.m. noon-ish, around there. We coached all day, two programs, finished, what, at 1 a.m.? Yeah. Or something. So, you know, wow. it was a good, you know, <clears throat> it was a long day. Only to find out at the end when we're wrapping up and Hip will test this. I tried ending it twice. And all of a sudden, alumni, Dan Kirby shows up last minute, wants to interject. I'm like, fuck, Dan Kirby. Okay, what? He's like, I just popped in here last minute to wish Mike a happy birthday. Mm. And we all stopped and looked at each other. And we, Josh, we had no fucking clue. And Mike not only filled in, did that all day yesterday. It was his birthday, and he didn't even mention it. Damn, man. Isn't that nuts? Wow. Oh, uh, yeah, dude. So, again, thank you, Mike, for yeah, serving with your whole heart. Working, that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, talk about serving with your whole heart. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay, we good, brother? I'm just still getting over that. Like I looked over like, geez, dude. Well, honestly, it was a good birthday. I've been missing TBN. So really good. It's not the same, like watching it from home. Really? Than the being in this room. Yeah. I saw him sitting in on my class. Yeah. Sorry fuck, about that. I felt I was going to fuck but... with you. I was going to be like, boy, you didn't pay. <laughs> you're, you're always welcome. I know. brother. I kind of, I kind of feel like I'm robbing you, but I can't help myself. No, you're always mm -hmm. welcome, man. And I'm Thank pretty you, sure dude. you're allowed to pay, Mike. If you, I know, so <laughs> I can't right now, <laughs> dude. After that last class, Josh, I just like fucking hate my work. It was weird, and it's like not your fault, but there's shit. You know how teaching or learning is like remembering, and there's stuff yeah. that I heard you say in other seminars or just. Hang on, should we just record and start? This is some organic shit. Are we recording? We're recording. Yeah, I'm. I'm recording. My bad. My my bad. Um, but, uh, yeah, after that, like the more it went on and the more you just talked about stuff and then pointing out like that lady that did that little, um, Asian woman portrait. And mm -hmm. you're just like, these, just these little touches. And I'm just like, gosh, 
Oh, you I were suck. telling me that on the phone that he points out you you were somehow comparing him to whatever I don't know how he points out like what you're saying the little things L- the like details. the little shit that like you notice it's like oh it's just the finishing touches and it's like yes. well, f- is your work like, as finished as the people that you're admiring you know right say that again is your work what is your work as finished as complete as the people that you're admiring not Ooh. is your work as good is it as finished yeah. and that's really really helped um, I have an incredible group of students right now. I'm so proud of them. They are all like excelling really, really fast and uh, mm. blowing my mind daily. I'm, I'm really lucky with my group of students right now. Dude, that's awesome to hear. Oh, it feels so good. Yeah. I wake up and I'm like, I get on my, my you know, forum and I'm like, are you kidding me? We wow. just talked about this and you're already busted out two examples and Damn. they're like literally like wow factors, you know. Man, it's, I'm just I couldn't be more proud. It's it's awesome. So cool. So what gives hip? Because I don't think he's talking about you. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> well, no, because I haven't well, put nothing out on I'm there. So. <laughs> but totally. look, even you know, hip is, you know, he is questioning some stuff and he's starting to think about new things. And you know, as an artist, you know, I have the artist curse, just like I talk a lot about. I think all artists do for the most part. You know, is my seminar good enough? Is it worth the money they're paying me? I'm always questioning this. So when I see Mm. examples of incredibly good work from these students that are hungry, and then when I hear people like Hip, who, you know, I'm a big fan of Hip's work as is, and he's starting to go, well, wait a minute. What if I added this? What if I added that? What if I grew? And it's like, if I had something to do with making Hip grow as an artist, come on, man. I'll take that any day. And I mean, it, so the the tattoo I did the day that I was finishing up before the class started, it was like I just, it didn't even need background, but yet I was found myself like, you know, fucking off rip, just focusing on the background and not mm. the the important imagery at hand. And it was like, well, that's stupid. Um, and so, I mean, it, I guess it's a good tattoo. Me five years ago would have been like, that shit's fire and that's amazing. But me right now and then follow it up with one of your classes talking about these little things and showing examples. And I'm like, my God, like, what the fuck am I even doing? Like, Which is awesome because something else in this moment I'd like to point out to you since I've had the honor of not only being your friend and a mentor in your life, but getting to sit shotgun during most of your growth the past almost six years now right and so one i can see i'm not in the painting i can see or to zoom out on your life right now because right now we're what if we're going to say we're the perspective the lens we're looking at what you just said and where you're at through the lens and the frame and you've got it sharp in focus zoomed in I zoom was able, am able to zoom out, and every time you hit an impasse, every time you're at the Y in the road and about to have a breakthrough to grow in your awareness, your technical ability, like Josh is saying, we're at whatever level we're at, you're at right now, you're back on a road of now questioning. Now, wait a minute. But your version is, man, because when you get new information, first it gets discouraging and you're showing up and be like, man, I fucking hate myself. I fucking suck, man, my shit, right? But to zoom out, this is what you do every time before you have a huge breakthrough is that you go through this pro. And I think we all do. We all yes. have our own version of it. Uh, and so zoomed in, what this seems and feels like a bad thing. You ain't shit, man. I should just hang it. Whatever. You do this every time. We do this every time. And that leads you to the next level of your best self and your greatness. But you go through this, you know, but zooming out, I've seen you do it over and over and you have. And so this zoomed in actually could be something real exciting for you, knowing that this is what happens every time. Well, it's cool to hear that because. um, uh, Maybe. I can I can believe that because maybe I've pondered that thought before. Um, but you know, when you're zoomed in, you can't like, you can't see the pattern, which is the importance of accountability from someone else's perspective. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and ultimately if you take the, that person, whoever it is for you, 
uh, if you trust them, then like you can just take that shit to the bank and and not have to like now wonder like man are they just saying that for like ulterior motives so i so all it, it's good is what yeah. i'm saying yeah it's good so, that you told me that okay good now can you speak on a specific that you're talking i mean your student in carlton's class right now yeah in the ik and whatever you witnessed just in the last class was either so profound or um a great fucking approach or tool, something to help you see what you couldn't see. And now you're like, fuck man. Now, like, can I even be that or do that? Can you speak a specific, like what's a little detail that he pointed out to you that you would have just walked right by? Well, so it's what I would have walked right by was the, like the little things that he was talking about, but there's also little things that I've noticed to look at tattoos that are like my favorite pieces of the tattoo and they like are so not important at all. Um, but I think maybe I got Josh's view on shit on a pedestal. So when he points something out, I'm like, well, that's not my favorite part of it, but maybe mm. it should be mm. and causes me to look deeper. But there's shit that I've learned in past seminars um, that the, that I took of his, that he's talked about, like that evergreen educational, you talked about, um, am, can I even talk about this? Like, yeah, without yeah. like, Okay. Totally. Um, the the importance of the classic color wheel um, on Procreate. He said that before, and I remember like taking extensive notes on it. It's, I I think maybe that even caused me to like jump over the edge and switch over to Apple. Um, that and every tattoo artist in the world uses an iPad, and I was using the other one. I can't even remember from. It's like I don't I don't know, but I was using a different um tablet and right. uh so i would do that and see my colors and then i would make like a swatch beside my pieces um and i think i started to attempt to mix my own colors and i was like man this is stupid this is a lot of work um but this round again like he's reintroducing it and he's starting to talk more about color color harmony and um he may have even said that in the first seminar or many times that we've had conversations, he may have said it, but it didn't have such an impact like it did last Thursday mm. where I was like, man, that's why shit looks off. Even though it looks great, it's because color harmony and Ross yes. all, always preached about color harmony. Um, and he taught me to oil paint with just warms and cools. And then I was like, well, fuck. You know, I went and seen Yomiko, Yomiko's seminar um, mm -hmm. in Vegas this year, and he has just warms and cools, um, and he tattoos like he paints. And I'm like, okay, so there's possible, um, and there's no way to to come away from color harmony if you're limiting your palette. And exactly. then um, uh, the uh, fuck, oh, it was right on the tip of my. Damn it. Well, while you're thinking about that, so like you're not ready to hear information until you're ready, you know? So mm. multiple times I have been told yeah. something or I have said something to somebody else. Yeah. And then like a year later they're doing it and they, and they might even tell me about it. And I'm like, dude, I'm the one that showed you that like a year ago. That's right. So I, I know for a fact that I have already told you these things, but you just weren't quite ready. And that's not a bad thing. That's just the way it is. Josh, right. you're so right. And I've learned right. that being a teacher myself. Yeah. It's not always about me giving my clients and students new information all the time as much as them being in a new place and a new way of being to actually receive it. Yeah. Right. Because right. what I picked up the first time was like, it, it's just proof that, that like, you know, you have – you have to revisit things constantly and, and you know, you're on the spiral staircase and I'm just a, a couple stories up than I was the first time I heard it. But yeah. now I've yeah. gone through a bunch of experiences that has led me to a point of like receiving it. And it's, you know, thinking about like mixing, pre-mixing your colors with grays and the, um, the, the exact color that it comes from. It's like, okay. So like questions I was wanting to ask then, but I figured I would eventually get the chance is like, 
you know, in flesh tones, like there's, you can use, um, there were things you were talking about in the seminar, like once you got it done and you went over the dirty white with everything, then you would dust like some light blues right here. Right. Um, and I was looking at stuff like that and it's like, um, being, oh, this was what I was thinking of. So he's a tonalist because he's colorblind somewhat. And I'm a, a color colorist. Is that what yeah. you called it? Yeah. Yeah. It, and it's almost, it feels like I've got the, the uh, less of the two. Um, so then, you know, I, I had to ask you, like, if I take a pic, so if I do a colored portrait, how about my, my map and my um, stencil and right. my image is black and gray. And he's like, eh, I wouldn't suggest that, but it would help to have it out. And I'm like, okay, so maybe while I'm picking my colors, if I pick out colors that I think are going to fall in that realm um, and then take a picture of those and then drop the saturation on it and then match the value of the black and gray piece, that could help because I just want to right. not being a tonalist is like, I just want to know what that's like. That that's curious to me because mm -hmm. I see what it does for you, and then it's like sure. I want now. I want to know. I want to know an artist who's a color colorist. You know, that's well, not a so, tonalist. Yeah. So, like for our listeners, if 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 this is sounding strange to you, all I'm meaning is generally, you were born a colorist or a tonalist. Simply meaning, you will really naturally gravitate towards one way. This color might just come more naturally to you as to where for other people black and gray like shading comes more natural it's rare that somebody is extremely good at both it absolutely happens today more than ever um, there yeah. are definitely artists that are masters at both it's just not as common so yeah. you know hip is very drawn I, you know i can tell hip is a colorist immediately but doesn't mean his black and gray isn't good it's just the color comes more natural to him the way he yeah. approaches it. Hopefully yes. that makes sense. Yes. It really does. And I can see it too. And yeah. people like Matt, at, at Matt, you're you're a tonalist to me. In my brain, I see yeah. you as a tonalist. Yeah. It's just a little uh, bit easier for you to shade. Even when you mm -hmm. color, your color is more of a shaded the new yeah. breed style of where we both come from made yeah. sense to us. Yep. Yeah. yeah. That's good. But for learning. Uh, what great distinctions to grow in your awareness, right? Because all of it, it, it's a learned skill. I believe Josh can teach you tonalism, you know, and you already dabble. And it's not like you're all one, the other, you may right. be more one, but I give you an example, you know, uh, like Josh, who works for, uh, with us, you know, he's definitely a colorist, right? Mm -hmm. Um, but he does black and gray pieces as well, but you can just tell, and he'll even tell you like, and he, Kills it a color, right? Slays it, you know? And so even if we were to make that comparison, then you're all of a sudden more of a tonalist than he is, even though you're still a colorist, right? Meaning all can grow in varying levels. You're more of a tonalist today than what you were four years ago because yeah. you're working with Josh and learning, and now you're on your awareness. You could, in three months, be a way better tonalist than what you are right now, you know? Yeah, I'm working with a really prominent, um, I can't really say the name because I'm not sure if they want me to, but I'm doing some private lessons with a really well, quite famous tattoo artist that is definitely a colorist, but they they really want to attempt to do some like really nice black and gray realism. And it's been really fun, but challenging to yeah. try to figure out the best way, like how can I approach this and give you this information? You've been tattooing almost yeah. as long as me. You know, Man. like you've got this incredible yeah. career. Yeah. How can I give you this to, to the best of my ability? So it's been fun, but challenging. Right. And for someone who's been doing it one way for so long, it's like almost having a an NBA player all of a sudden, or a basketball player, just start to try and relearn just to sink threes left-handed, even though they've been right-handed their whole <laughs> right, career. Right. You know, like... Imagine yeah. that. Wow. I mean, yeah. I can only imagine, because when you came and tattooed... Uh, hip here at aisle nine and he did the beautiful portrait of your dad i had the honor of watching him most of the day and on purpose brought a client in to try and emulate execute the way he tattooed you to implement anything that this man does and you remember i basically couldn't you know it's like wow like i'm on you know need, what's you know 
Sorry. No, What's been interesting it. to me with this is I've had several students whose work I greatly admire, in, yeah. including you. You haven't necessarily, well, you actually, I guess you did take a, a course from me earlier. Yeah, absolutely. And I guess in my brain, I always thought we probably had a similar approach. And mm. so when I find out that it's different, it, it's like, I'm so interested in like, well, how do you get there? Because mm-hmm. it might, you know, it's like, it makes so much sense to me as to where yours makes so much sense to you, right? Yeah, right. So it's really yeah. fascinating, like what made us choose these directions to do the things we do. Because I can look yeah. at somebody else's work. And I'm a big fan of Mez Love. You know, Mez yeah. has has taken stuff from me, and I yep. think her work has a similar look than mine quite a bit mm. when she does that noir type of stuff. Mm-hmm. But she was like, "This is so different for me," and I was like, "Really? I would have bet money you mm. approached it just like I do, but it, it, mm. it's not. She doesn't." So now yeah. I'm like fascinated with her technique too, because yeah. I can learn from that, you know. Well, and speaking of approach, well, another thing amongst that I admire about you and guys like you is because, dude, your approach today has not always been your approach. Exactly. You know, yeah. And I fifteen years that. ago, when you had huge mags and was going <laughs> yeah. doing fast circles like I yep. do, for that guy who's used to doing huge mags, doing fast circles, whatever to all of a sudden grab an 11 mag and slow down and start pendulum yes. is that it was, I admire your ability to make those switches and to fucking own them, you know? Yeah. That was tough too, because I had already written a book on these mm. are the things that work for me. And then I'm like, well, who am I to fucking you know, sell a book to somebody and then be like, well, I don't do that. Yeah, so right. I actually <laughs> was like, I was nervous, but you know what? Everybody grows hopefully and changes. So as yeah. I grew and changed, yeah. that's why I came up with the Everything I Know class because it's Man. like everything I know currently, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to yes. share with you, you know. Jeez, man. And updates all along the way. Yeah. So like, you know, Which, Hip, you're, don't stress over feeling like, you know, there's so much to learn that's new and everything. Like I love knowing that you are now ready to receive that particular information about Color Harmony. Yes. Yeah, because color harmony is a weird thing, and if you don't nail it, it's so strange. Because you'll look at your tattoo or your painting, and you're like, "I don't get it. I it, it looks like the picture. I I reproduced it faithfully, but something feels off to me, and yeah. it's color harmony. And then yeah. when you when you Ooh. get the color harmony, it's like it feels good in your soul. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And he not only has proven that in his work, but almost not showed off about it. But back in the day, it'd almost be like, damn, this dude was like, damn, show off, which he wasn't, you know, but he was showing up back when you would do portraits that would either basically be like a black and gray portrait and then just have one or two colors yeah. in it. Like out of nowhere, a red and a lime green, just whipping yeah. through half of the cheek yeah. where most people would be like, never even attempt that. And because of the harmony, it like exactly. warmed your soul. It like felt good. It helped you breathe to look at, you know? Yeah, I'll and never it was forget. Just impressive. I'll never forget. I was at a show and I got to tattoo uh, another tattooer that I really admired. And it was really important because, you know, all tattoos are important, but this was a portrait of his, his mother. And um, yeah, like it was just black and gray. And I just took a chance and I did exactly that. I remember there was like a, <laughs> a big splash of green across the face. Yeah. And he was, yeah. I could kind of feel it. He was kind of looking down and kind of like, you know, I, I don't know. Mm. And then I'm like, do you love it? Do you like it? And he's like, I do. But what made you put that green in there? And I kind of told him and he was like, okay. Mm. And I'm like, are you not feeling it? And he's like, I, I think so. And then the next morning he came and found me and he just loved it so much. Yeah, you know. Dude. But there was yes. a moment where I was like, oh, fuck. But beca- yeah. again, because I'm a tonalist and I can see these mm-hmm. values, I knew that green was the exact right value, meaning yeah. creating yeah. color harmony. And it, yes. you know, he absolutely loved it. I don't recommend yeah. just doing that. No. <laughs> but, you know, I probably Fuck should have no. you know, <laughs> asked him. <laughs> Dude, but, uh, I wouldn't have fucking slept that whole night. I, I don't think know? I did. Uh, I don't think I did. Yeah. Well, but, no, that's but he fucking loved it. beautiful. Yeah. Yes. And so did the rest of the world when we saw the pick and it was so pushing the envelope. But it was one of those things like, well, again, he just proved color harmony by breaking all the rules, it seems. Yeah. Like, do you, we couldn't dare do that and actually pull it off well. It would look like, I could name you a list of artists, like the guys that are trying 
too hard. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because if you don't it, know, yeah. if you just splash <laughs> color and it's not the right color, oh man, <laughs> oh, it's you're man. you're asking for problems. Yeah, there's a That's, science. There's a, there's almost math to it. You know, my God, mm-hmm. everything I know by Joshua Carlton. Get in where you can, y'all. But hip, you started it. this whole conversation out by saying, learning, oftentimes is remembering. Right. Right. That's beautiful. You're uh, welcome. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, guys, let me be the first to say, like, it feels so good to be back on this podcast. I'm so happy to see both your faces. Oh man. And, uh, you know, I've been getting these beautiful messages. Our listeners are just such good people. And like, they write the most beautiful things, whether it's publicly on a review or just privately yes, uh, about yes. how important, you know, what we apparently are doing is. And I know oh some God. of our, I know some of our episodes can get a little heavy. Yeah. I like to propose today. Let's keep it a little fun. Let's keep it a little light. I got I got some uh, some pet peeves I would love to talk about. What do you guys think about that? <laughs> well, hip open that can of worms. We had pet peeves part one, and Mr. Carlton wasn't a part of that one. Yeah, I haven't been able you to guys... do it, you know? <laughs> I'm always fucking down for comedy. Yeah. Or just like right? the stupid, immature shit. I 100% am always down for Hip's it. It's a big kid, ain't Don't you? change, Hip. It. Don't change. That's right. Oh, That's I right. won't. <laughs> Ooh, you know, well, I'm gonna I, grab some is, popcorn, boys. Right? <laughs> and this is a great time. Hey, listeners, send us some of your, you know, go up to our Instagram and record your, like, get, like we say, give us a call, right? What are some of your That's pet right. peeves? Or put them down in yes. the comments. If you're watching this on YouTube, put them in the comments. We all yeah. collectively share this, you know, it doesn't even have to all be, I, my stuff's not all tattooing either. I all hope right. that's okay, you know? Right. No, and, and you know, for our listeners or, or any of you guys, if you follow Derb, which I know you both do, um, he's been listing a lot of Another. pet peeves that I totally can agree Holding with. Holding the signs up. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, like the one where it's like if you're getting your foot tattooed, wash your feet. Like, right. uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, that, Matt, uh, you know, Matt's fucking on that. <laughs> I don't, for our listeners that don't know, Matt has a serious issue with feet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I like the one where he held, or he, and I don't remember exactly what it said, but basically to build relationships with more local shops. Right. Yes, that is so you good, know, right? Yeah. That's the so one good. I commented on, like this, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I shared that one, commented on it, because it, it was maybe something similar. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's a pet peeve, because it's like, why is it? That you continue to think, you know, what I'm saying like I've seen McDonald's and Burger King side by side growing up my entire life, and I've never yet see a fucking Burger King and a McDonald's employee like having fisty cuffs in the parking lot. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> the clown and usually, the king. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> they usually. <Holy> fuck. <laughs> I, <laughs> when I would fuck, when I worked at Taco Bell as a kid, like I would get sick of eating there. So like we would trade with like Pizza Hut or something, and right. like we'd give them free food. They give us free food. Yeah. Um. So it was more like a love, respect, and admiration. Admiration. Mm-hmm. So it's just weird that it's like, and you know what's crazy about that? Because yeah, this one fucking is a pet peeve for sure. Is because like it, it seems like local and not local to us, but local to anyone. It's like um, the one trick ponies, the kings of Turd Island, whatever the fuck you want to call it. It's like they're just monkeys in a barrel. Um, and I just assume that that's how all tattoo artists were everywhere. But like there's a certain level that like when you get to it and you begin to travel around. Um, you start seeing more like-minded people, right? World-class people recognize world-class people yep. and they're cool and they're sweethearts. Now, some of them are assholes. I've met a couple um, yep. on that stage that are assholes, but it's like when I go to say like uh, another town and I'm there with one of those world-class people, um, I start hearing about some of like the local shit and shenanigans and politics that goes on. And I'm like, well, that's crazy. Um, but, you know, like Garrett um, up in Minnesota, he's got this thing called FART, which I can't remember what it stands for. Um, but it's basically all the local shops in the Twin Cities 
um, St. Paul and uh, it's the other one. Fuck Minnesota or the Minneapolis, Minneapolis and St. Paul. Um, they all get together monthly and go to this like thing called fart, which is where hmm. it's basically like Knights of the round table or something similar to that. So okay. I thought that was cool, but yeah, I think there needs to be more of that in the industry. That's definitely a fucking pet camaraderie piece. brotherhood. Yeah. Some more of that for sure. You know, yeah. Yeah. And I mean, if you want to look at it like, um, on a war side, like it's us against the clients, you know, it's not us against us. Right, that's how, right. that's how nations fall is when they start fighting their own. Yeah. I've always found it so strange when like, there's always one or two artists in a shop that just seem to really focus on, I always say with the guys down the street, you know, whatever they're doing, it just pisses this guy off, you know? And I'm always like, man, just, you know, you know, you'll hear me say like, start, you know, fill up your sketchbook. But even beyond that, it's just like, who cares? You know, who cares? I don't know. Like, why do you care so much? Or also, if there's somebody down the street and he does amazing work and somebody wants to come in for a consultation with me and I'm not the guy because maybe it's just, you know, like I'm not real versed in Japanese tattooing. I love it. I appreciate it so much, but I'm not going to be the best at it. But if the guy down the street's really good at it, like I'm going to recommend him, you know, like there's nothing yeah. wrong with that. And some people really fight that. A lot of shop yeah. owners will really fight that. Like, don't you dare take it out of the shop. But it's like, I mean, what am I going to do? Like a mediocre tattoo instead of when this guy can get a really good one from the guy down the street? Right. You know? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And I feel like we have uh, are continuing to take responsibility for us to do our part, you know, to create unity, obviously globally, but even locally. That's why, like... For years, us at aisle nine, it was almost like an unspoken, but on our off days, any one of us would go into other shops just to bless them, introduce ourselves, mm -hmm. look at their work, you know what I'm saying, just to build the relationship. And sometimes it worked out great. It always did in the, in the but sometimes it, it came across as weird. Like, what's really these dudes' motives? Why is he yeah, in here being yeah. so cool? And I, knowing that, I understand that. This is where we've learned it takes consistency. When you're the same every time and all the time, they eventually realize, man, these are some rare dudes that have no motive. They're just trying to be down. And they're not takers. They're just givers, right? And you've I've watched you walk in that for years. Uh, you, and that's why even though we still got some local haters, it's the you know those aren't personal, but I've also watched you. You're highly respected in this city by a lot of tattoo artists and a lot of them beyond your work love you because you loved them first exactly yeah, well put yeah i just feel like there's so much room for all of us like i know in my in my class i was seeing on the forum that people were talking about after class like starting like a, a google hangout group yeah you know what i mean and I just yeah. love that. It's like it's like yes. you've already spent hours talking, and now right after that's class, right. you're going to go and do it, do it more. Dude, so I love the fact so that good. these guys have come together, and ultimately, some of them, you know, friendships are born out of this and everything. So, so it just right. helps tattooing. It just makes oh it just makes God. tattooing better. It really does. And man, there's a lot to that, Josh. The same thing happened with this round of my TBM students on week one. One dude had the courage to raise his hand and ask if anyone would like to be his accountability partner going through my program for them to challenge one another to Ooh, implement that. this work on and then uh, check back in with one another on Fridays to hold each other. Make sure you did what you said you was going to do. Well, man, yeah, that awesome. started like like wildfire and several people joined on week one only to come back this week to all have great wins and testimonials and saying and already building relationships that they didn't even know one another the week before. Right. Uh, so just to speak to like the culture that uh, you and I both somehow have gotten to be a part of getting to create. And like Nico said, if we get to be some of the dudes to help kick that door in, yes. right. Exactly. Uh, and seeing above and beyond what you and I show up and create, cultivate, and deliver to our students, them taking a, their own initiative to fucking 
you know, build their own accountability and start their own groups. Google Hangout, like you said, it just fucking warms my heart, man. It's and like you yeah. said, it's not only powerful but needed. It's necessary, as your man Les Brown say. What's Les right. Brown say here? You gotta be hungry. Yeah, but what does he say? <laughs> with, how's he, where's the necessary part? You know, I don't know. Oh, that's a famous. Damn, I feel say. bad. You teed me up, man. That's okay. That's all right, man. I mean, even Jordan missed you the layup. Be, uh, <laughs> like attracts advice. like, yeah. you know. So we're that's also right, similar brother. anyway. We're also similar oh anyway to share these stories about these clients. You know, like I'll be scrolling through TikTok and I'll see like a waitress, and she's like, "What's the craziest story you've ever had with the customer?" I'll go first. And they tell some crazy story, but they're funny, right? We've yeah. all got millions of those stories. Like, right. we have a unique experience that only tattoo artists can really understand, you know, and that yes. unites us. So I love yes. just talking shit. I love it when I go into my studio and everybody's there. The more people yes. there are working, the better for me because I want to, I, 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 I grew up in that environment. You know, I want to know what's going on and, Hear the little yes. backstories and the, you know, just the vibe of a tattoo shop. Like, I just love it, you know? So good. So yes. I, I fucking held the show hostage at the beginning. Um, but what, what, what pet peeve you got, Josh? You know, one of the, okay. <laughs> I cannot, st this is the dumbest thing to me. When, when I travel all the time, as you guys do as well. Tell me you don't see this as well. Ba just in general, ba public bathrooms, there's a lot, so much weird stuff happens in them. Mm. <laughs> Every time I go into a public restroom, uh, two things happen. Somebody's in there that is shitting like they've never shit in their life. <laughs> like, like, are you dying? You yeah, know, like, right. does this happen every time you shit? And I just didn't realize that I'm lucky and my, my poop just mm -hmm. escapes nicely. <laughs> because I'm like, are you okay, bro? Like, seriously, like, you do not sound okay. So that happens. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking 80% of the time I'm in any public bathroom. Somebody's giving birth to Damn. a fucking hippo. Yeah, I, I got to agree with that too, dude. It's like, weird, I take, right? I think, it's like, I think I, I purposely, if I knew someone's in a bathroom and I have to shit in a public bathroom, I'm not going to be over there like moaning. I mean, yeah, I'm hearing like, seriously, like, are you okay? And then that <laughs> motherfucker, this is a big pet peeve, will come out of the stall. And I don't know why you wouldn't want clean hands, but they want me to think that they wash their hands. So they turn on the water and just like run their hands underneath it for four seconds <laughs> and then leave. Okay, you're, pre you're literally pretending to wash your hands in front of a stranger so I can feel good about you. Why wouldn't you just wash your hands, bro? Like, <laughs> that's bizarre, right? Since you're on the topic, are, do you make a nest for yourself before you sit down? I do. I do. Yeah. Me Who's too. Who's going to bear back that, dude? Well, yeah. I know. I guess girls uh, will uh, hover. Huh? <laughs> I've heard about like women I, just like hover over it, you know? Girls are squatters. I think that's yeah. mainly just to pee. Yeah, like, I couldn't hover and shit. Oh, that's man. a lot. I Maybe mean, that's what they're doing. Maybe that's that noise, man. Maybe their knees are buckling. <laughs> <laughs> um. Well, fuck yeah, then that tees mine up perfectly because my pet peeve, is, and especially at tattoo conventions, is fucking, um, you know, because the more I realize that the, the people that you think you don't need are the ones you actually need to treat and show more respect to um, simply because they do something that I don't like to do, like clean a bathroom, clean a fucking tattoo convention bathroom. I hate oh, yeah. going in to a bathroom and th this is why I hate this. And this is why I have most of my pet peeves. Cause when I was a little boy, I would piss all over the toilet seat and I did and I didn't care. And I grew up with women and it was fuck you up. My dick hang. I did piss. on accident, but I've got two pee holes. So yeah, it comes to the territory. <laughs> Go ahead. But yeah. So I growing out of that, finally, like it's just respectful. Someone may need to shit. Um, sometimes a girl may come in after you, which will go into my next pet peeve. Um, but yeah, going into these bathrooms at tattoo shows and fucking like, it's, it's like, you're not even trying to even piss in the toilet. Like there's piss up on the wall. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the toilet paper's wet and it's like, you just are totally disrespecting 
and somebody's got to clean that up. And if someone's got a shit real bad, like there's just piss all over everything. And it's just, it's fucking stupid. Um, and you know, so I know when the day comes and <clears throat> you're going to finally fulfill one of your dreams, which is possibly throw your own convention. Yeah. I already know you going to have two servicemen in that bathroom. You're going to get the <laughs> mouthwash. You're going to get some clothes. Right, you you might mitts even and yeah, set out your Tom Ford bottles for the fellas for the weekend. Yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> but also I'll have an announcement for sure every day, kind of yeah. like they already do. Like, don't wash your fucking tattoos in the sink in the public. Yeah, bathroom. not to make this all bathroom stuff, but that's a real thing, man. I walk in yeah. there at Evergreen. If I see somebody washing their tattoo in the fucking sink, they're, they yeah. got their leg up in the sink and blood. Oh, yeah. come on. Yeah. You are yeah. grown up. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. You, well, speaking disgusting. of, um, who's that big collector, uh, Jordan uh, Fino, 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 Fino or whatever? Yeah. And of course, Fino. I met him at Evergreen. I was actually interviewed him while he was getting tattooed by Kyle Cotterman. This was in 2019 before this podcast. And that's when I was starting my own podcast. And Josh uh, gave me permission to do my first two episodes live at Evergreen. Right. Um, and so, you know. And I interviewed Jordan. It never aired, blah, blah, blah. And the only reason why I'm bringing this up, I, and so this wasn't a pet peeve of mine, but it's it was weird to me and goes in the same vein as the conversation right now, is that day he was wearing, you know, he took his shoes off because he's getting a leg piece by Cotterman. He's late. Cotterman's got him laid out on the table, right? And like a lot of dudes, he's wearing white footies or no shows. Brand new pair of white ones, right? The weird part is on breaks, he got up, walked the convention all the way to the bathroom inside to stand at one of those urinals and piss just in his socks instead of just slipping his shoes back on. And they took multiple breaks and he walked in his socks every time and come back and, you know, Carmen puts him back up. Now the bottoms of his feet are soiled, right? <laughs> They're not white no more. Right. And I remember, just remember sitting there thinking like, man. That's fucking weird. And this ain't this dude's first rodeo. It wasn't a pet peeve, but it was weird. Why I don't feel bad mentioning it is because he obviously didn't care. The whole world was watching him. You know what I'm saying? Like, but I thought that was weird. Yeah. Weird. And yeah. I don't know. And I, I can ride with that because in prison, like there were dudes and in jail that, so you get like fucking prison slippers um, and we would call them Vikings, but they would wake up in the morning and walk barefoot across the fucking jail floor and then get into the shower stall and, and bathe uh, with, with nothing on the bottom of their feet, mm. which mm. Yeah, jail shower stall. Yeah. I mean, you know what happens in there. Some serious, so. like uh, athlete's foot and stuff like that. Oh, Just, fucking! You know, I, an impregnated fucking toe knuckle. Like, who knows what the <laughs> fuck would happen, dude? <clears throat> Some kind of weird flesh eating bacteria from too many genetic yeah. semen clumps interlocking oh. in a sewer drain. Oh. Who knows? Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <clears throat> <laughs> you get a visual how can i not <laughs> I, am. I know i'm too visual that's why i'm like sinking down in my chair right now. that's the curse of being a creative artist we just see things completely oh, differently. shit <laughs> what did you say about sabotage on the show here <laughs> <laughs> just kidding <laughs> But no, when you're talking about you hate seeing pee on the floor, what about the dude that walks in, steps in, in his socks? You know? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> hey, that's his shit. <laughs> yeah. So, so let's so to get off of a uh, bathroom yeah, stuff right. for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> am I the only one? Do you notice that? Like, okay, so you've heard me say like, I'll go into a bookstore, and because there's so many books. I'll get overwhelmed and I'll like forget what I went there for. And suddenly I got to poop and like it's everything goes crazy because the books are everywhere and it overwhelms me. I've talked about this. Yeah, in the past. I remember you said that yeah. once. So it's amazing. Did you say I, suddenly you got to poop every yeah, time? Everything goes, everything goes haywire. <laughs> so I guess we are back on the bathrooms. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, am I the only one that's, that's noticed as a tattoo artist when people come in to get tattoos, they get a little bit of that, right? Because it's they're excited, yeah. they're nervous. And they yeah. forget how to fucking sit in a goddamn chair like a regular ass human being. Like I will literally be like, so, you know, I got like a generic tat soul kind of thing, whatever. You know what I mean? It's just your basic yeah. tattoo chair. Yeah. And these motherfuckers will like, 
like I'm going to tattoo your arm, right? So they like, they lay down on their stomach backward, like with their head where the feet go, or (laughs) you could see them processing how to get into this chair. Oftentimes they'll just, oftentimes they'll, they'll sit in my chair or they'll sit (laughs) on the armrest. (laughs) <laughs> like people always sit on the armrest especially these new bigger ones it's like ooh this must yeah. be I can lay down on this but yeah. I will see people go through so much mental gymnastics and how to just sit in a chair and it's like yeah. you know you're not doing that at home on the couch watching Netflix right. <laughs> just sit down just sit down That's it's okay hilarious. yeah Right? Do you guys yeah. get that? Do you see that too? Uh-huh. Yeah. Man. I that- think a pet peeve of mine with clients is the overly uh, eager helper client Oh God! The client that really means well and wants to is just overly eager to help you today do yeah. your job, even yeah. if that's like take your stencil that you taped right and, and then move it a little for you or touching shit they shouldn't, thinking they're helping you. Even like you know, if, if I'm getting low on paper towels and someone just wants to start ripping them for me, they're trying to be helpful, and I ask them to, and I'm usually politely declining, like, "Oh no, thanks, that's all right, I got it," or "No thanks," but having yeah. to stop. You know what I'm saying? Because they're oh, yeah. moving your shit and like, well, or if we drop something, you know, they want to pick it up. Of course, we're always educating them. And that's okay. Yeah. But I guess it's the ones that after you educate and have declined and said, no, thanks. And like, hey, if I need whatever, they still keep trying to yeah. help. Or when they put it yeah. at the end of the tattoo, they're so happy. They want to give you a big fat tip. And where do they put it? On the fucking tray. <laughs> Just throw that cash down on that dirty tray. You're like, oh. yeah. Or they just pull fucking paper towels off of your fucking paper towel stack, and it's like, yes. listen, everything that's everything that's right here um, is contaminated. Don't fucking touch it. Yeah. Or when you're putting Saniderm on, and like, you know, when I put Saniderm on, I put it on, and then I squish around the outside of the tattoo to see the wrinkles, so I know it's sticking real good. And right. they'll like be sitting there like doing it for me, and I'm like, don't yeah. touch it. Um, and, you know, it. there's Don't been times it. where I'm like, listen, you're just locking staff in on your tattoo because I wipe yeah. all my tattoos down with alcohol. Mm-hmm. It seems like an asshole thing to do. I get it. But it's fucking that's cool. You you got to go for a little bit more of a burn right. to make sure it's 100 um, percent completely sterilized. And then I begin wrapping it only for you to stick your dirty dick beaters on the fucking Saniderm and touch it, which is now yeah. getting ready to have Saniderm over top of it. So that's just going to lock in any Strap bacteria. It. Well, right. I just it, I just walk yeah, well, around the shop with my dirty pee socks and then I clean the tattoo off with the, the socks. <laughs> I mean, you just, just pick your foot up and start wiping it down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's cool, man. I've been tattooing for a long time. It, it's fine. That's right. Yeah, that shit will buff out. <laughs> It'll be fine. Yeah. I know what I'm doing. Take my class, damn it. <laughs> Everything I tow. <laughs> ah, get it. <laughs> uh, okay. Four way stops. Yeah. Fucking it's uh okay, how do you do a four way stop, Matt? Say, okay, let me let me let me lay down what it looks like okay. here. <laughs> so here's a car coming up. Boom. You two come at the same time and while you're slowly stopping, this guy gets here. Who goes first? So, but I beat him there. You you basically arrived at the same time, and this dude came back about like a two two seconds after y'all. Us two go first. Well, what if what if you're if going I'm, this I got way? My turn signal, and he's coming straight. Great, the well, guy on the I mean, right goes well, first. Yeah. Well, no, because he's the he's the last one to, to arrive to the party. Yeah. Oh, so oh, I, I feel like me and the oncoming is inching. Once I got my blinkers on. If that oncoming keeps inching, then I'm going to wait. If he sees my blinker and he stops inching, then I'm going to go. Or the polite is thing it is dark to- out or light. So either way, if it if we can see each other, it's light. We can maybe wave or go ahead. Or hit the block. Or right. hit the blinds. Yeah. Right. Well, so... Here's a couple things in this in this predicament. One, it's the dance. Yeah. So like yeah. I give you the brights. Yeah. And then you don't move. And then I yeah. begin to move. Yeah. And then you begin to move. And it's just like, oh my God. Yeah. And then I Which, get pissed and embarrassed mm. thinking the entire world's looking at me. Yeah. And I'll just cut a motherfucker off. Man. But see, right leading up to that, that's such a common thing. That dance happens to I would go as far as say every driver that ever oh, yeah. is driven at least once in your you going to do that dance. Yeah. Right? And so that's why I feel like 
There's no reason to be embarrassed because it takes two to tango and we're both dancing right now. And I've even waited extremely long periods of time for the third party now to be like, fuck both y'all and they go. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, yeah. But also it, it's the, so, okay, on, on my way down to work, there's a roundabout there now, which I was like, oh yes, there's a fucking roundabout. Like it's going to speed shit up mm -hmm. only to find out that fucking people don't understand how roundabout works and they're still using it like it's a four fucking way stop. <laughs> and this is just like making me so livid because it's like a big yield sign, like due to cross the streets coming around, but you're going to wait until he passes you. So right. that way, as he's passing you, fucking 500 other cars get in line and you're yeah. just stuck sitting there. And it's like, it's a yield sign, dude. As soon as you got enough room to get out, go. Like we did it yesterday. I know. I was thinking of that. You were driving and we were at that roundabout. And that it's fucking all the dude just sat in front of us. And right. it was like, come on, dude, go, right. go. But and, you didn't. Then, and when you finally pulled it, you weren't looking at the guy that was coming. Or no, you I did. totally was. I just, just yeah. knew I had enough room and was and like, you fuck did, him. Even though he honked thinking <laughs> that you caught him off. Right. right. And it was a timing thing. And for you to do that, you did have to like gun it a little. Well, you know, you had to drive with a little bit more of authority, and it all magically seemed like it was triggered from your frustration of the dude we were waiting totally on. Totally was. Right? But at the end of the day, we're talking seconds, and none of that was even on my radar until you gunned it, and then dude honked, mm -hmm. you know? And I was getting ready for class. We were on a dinner break, and it was just like, huh, oh, okay, no biggie. And I just went, and it literally left my radar. Right. You know, that quick to where other folks, like, it's fucking leading to some road rage or fucking pissing you off, you know. Which, which it totally can, and like I get it, like there's there's whatever, but you know, from someone that didn't have a license and had to do multiple fucking um, defensive driving courses over and over and over again, it's like I just understand four way stops, and <laughs> it just yeah. seems like no one does, or they just completely disregard any of the rules that go to it, which in turn pisses me off when they do it. And then I want to act on it, and I have acted on it, but all that does is keep the cycle of insanity going for the next 20 cars that show up to that same spot. The irony on a roundabout. The irony is a roundabout and mm. keeping the cycle of insanity going. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, and I, you know, I trailed off to it to a roundabout, but yeah, it's a four way stop because ultimately whoever stops first, even if all four stop that person, then once they go, now it's got to go in fucking, uh, not clockwork. What's it? Uh, when it's not clockwork. Counter? Counterclockwise. Counterclockwise, yeah. yes. <clears throat> then from there, it has to be every man to the right. Yeah. And then that should hold pretty steady. As See, long this as is why I don't even, drive. Even flow <laughs> of traffic. This, this is all foreign to me anyway. You know? Right. This may also be why no one's even still listening. <laughs> <laughs> I, I beg to differ. I bet there's a lot of people that are like, yeah, fuck that. Or they're like, right. um, pulling Wonder how many people's driving right now on a roundabout listening. There's probably going to be quite a few. Yeah, right. that'd be cool. Do you guys but, have... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, I was just going to say tee Matt up for one of his fucking pet peeves. Yeah. What were you going to say, Josh? Oh, uh, what? Well. I, I was, <laughs> was going to ask if you guys have In-N-Out Burger in Ohio. We don't in Ohio. What is it? In-N-Out. Uh-uh. So that's a pet peeve of mine because we have one here. And before it was here, I mean, I think they were just in California... People yeah. act like it's straight from heaven. Right. And I went there and it's like a regular ass burger. I didn't fucking think anything was special about it. And yeah. then everybody's like, oh, you got to get the animal style. You got to get the stuff, the secret menu. And it's like fucking secret menu. Like if this is the best food <laughs> in the world, why is it a goddamn secret? And like mm -hmm. every single time I go to, I go to this place, I get duped every time. And you could go on a Wednesday at two in the afternoon, and there's a line wrapped around the fucking block for a burger that tastes like my fucking lunch lady at school made it. So I don't get it. Guys, comment below if I'm missing out on something. I guess tell me about <laughs> animal style because that sounds fucking amazing. Or what? Yeah. I don't know, the secret menu. Imagine if, my, if I ran my tattoo shop like that, right? All my yeah. tattoos are really like middle of the road, except for there's a broom in the back with the really good flash. You know what I mean? Right. That nobody, nobody knows about. Oh man, you didn't get you get you didn't get Josh's animal style. 
Fuck you. That's right. <laughs> um, I heard that, and I think the the only time I ate in it was when Vegas when we were there at championships, and yep. my client was like, "Oh, you gotta go," yeah. and he told me about like one of those. Styles yeah, there's always somebody it, that's like, it's the hill they're gonna die on. They're like, "It's the best ever." Yeah, yeah, they had to take us. Well, that was a better hill hill than the one you chose to die on. It was. <laughs> I knew this was coming. Right, Years ago, this. when I lived in Phoenix, there was like a fast food, which I'm not a fast food guy these days, but back then, especially on a late night, what was it? Del Taco, <laughs> right? And this was back in the day, man, where I'd like, you know, be partying all night. So I was, you know, usually half shit faced or whatever, starving. So going through and three chicken soft tacos at Del Taco was money, boy. <laughs> and that was, you know, probably, you know, well, it was before my tattoo career. So let's just say 20 years ago, right? Right. And I ain't had Del Taco since. So now we're in Vegas, the championships, and I just remember how glorious Del Taco was. I'm like, shit. <laughs> hang on, hang on. <laughs> we're walking into fucking In N Out Burger, and my client's telling me about this fucking weird style. And I find out that it has mayonnaise on it. I'm like, yeah, fuck that style. I want yeah. regular style. Um, and as we're walking in, like Matt kind of pulls up on me, or we're talking about something, and I'm like, is this place really that good? And he's like, man, I mean, it's. No, it's just a burger place. <laughs> you know, it's just novelty. And I'm like, cool. And fucking like we're eating. <laughs> and somewhere along that night, he was like, but you know what is good? <laughs> and I was like, what? You know he was what like, Del Taco. And I'm like, yeah. bet. That's what we're eating tomorrow night. Um, and then, then okay, now you, you can finish. And we were so let down. I was embarrassed. <laughs> it was complete shit. <laughs> and I first was like, it's just got to be this location. Like, I don't remember it being this bad. <laughs> but I did hype it up and made a whole group of us go and find one <laughs> oh man. you know and it was a big letdown for all wasn't yeah. it yeah <laughs> uh, ever since he see that'd be bad for me down. because i'm the guy that like if i invite you to a movie and the movie sucks it's for, i feel bad for some stupid reason so that <laughs> totally. would be fucking hell for me I did, and there was a funny awkwardness that no one wanted to, like, tell me. They're right. all looking at me to gauge to right. set the pace. Like, does Matt really? Does he think this is as glorious as he thought? <laughs> like, I had to be the one to be like, oh, my bad. And for everyone else, be like, okay, good. <laughs> it, and we, we were getting... Um, we were getting signs leading up to it all, to the point to where we were at a four-way stop. Um on oh, there's no pet peeves at that other than the de the del taco is across the street we're waiting for the light to change i look over um and there's a uh a homeless man with no he's in a wheelchair and he has no legs and it's in vegas at night so it's like 90 degrees and he's got a coat on and he's rinsing his nubs and his body in a mud puddle on the side mm. of the road Mm -hmm. uh, which is like a good indicator of like, man, this fucking place better be delicious. <laughs> uh, but it, 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 it I, we it wasn't was even as good as Taco sure. Bell. Yeah. Yeah. But uh -uh. so I've never eaten at it since, or maybe I have one, one other time. <laughs> I know that anytime I'm out where Del Tacos are at, I always send a picture to Matt and I'm like, look, man, <laughs> he does every time. I'm missing out. Yeah. Yep. I can't bring up, I can't bring up in and out with somebody like my neighbor, like me talking about it right now, my neighbor's probably going to be at my door when I'm done and be like, no, wait a minute. Have you tried animal style? You know, <laughs> I can't get away from it. Uh, uh, that's so good. So doll we stencils or doll stencils, <laughs> doll scissors um, for oh, cutting yeah. stencil paper. It folds uh, that shit in half. You try to cut it, um, it folds it. <laughs> dude. You want to kill somebody. When, when Matt fucking... Um, Opened aisle nine, like he got, we, we all were given a pair of golden scissors, like real, like higher end scissors to cut the ribbon. Um, and we, you know, the ones that started it had kept a piece of ribbon and we've kept our golden scissors. I pride myself on taking care of my golden scissors, but as the shop's grown, more people see my scissors and come and use my scissors. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like, I don't want to be the dickhead. That's like clean the fucking scissors when you're done. Yeah, well, actually I was the, yeah, they'll have purple on them and shit. They didn't even wipe alcohol them off or nothing. 
Yeah. Yeah. So and I, Hip takes care of all his shit, not just his scissors. He's one of those. Like, you remember he told the story when he was a boy, he had all his Ninja Turtles and figure turtles, like had to be arranged a certain way. And he's that way with his inks, his needles, his cabinets organized. It's the cleanest, his setup all the way down. So someone that rolls like that, now keeping your one and only sentimental gold scissors clean makes even more sense. Right. And, and so somewhere along the line, they've, fucking hoed themselves out and have traveled around the shop and i don't even know if i've got my originals anymore but all the gold scissors at the shop fucking suck ass and i've told the apprentice fucking so many times to fucking clean them and get them sharpened and like i don't think he understands like the severity of me wanting him to do that (laughs) because each time i go back to use them um so it's to the point where i just gotta hide scissors (laughs) Um, so I do have a pair of scissors that's hidden in my booth, um, so only for to, me. To get your apprentice to remember to sharpen these scissors, gather sharpen all them, the gold scissors up, go to his sharpen house, them. and put them in his bed. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we used to have a roommate. I, we had a roommate back in the day when I was like, you know, barely out of high school, my first apartment. And uh, one of the roommates would never, ever wash their dishes. Everybody else was really nice and clean. This guy always had like cereal bowls, like rotting milk. It just we let it just stack up. And put that we gathered that shit up one day and put it in his fucking bed. It never happened again. <laughs> you know what, Carlton? Back in the day, you know, when I was working for Brenner, and it was my first year. Out front of our shop was literally about this round. It was probably two or three foot in diameter, uh, uh, almost like a flower pot filled with sand for cigarette butts. Right. And a lot of people stand out sh- shop smoke and a lot of people would they just throw their butts in that general vicinity. And mm-hmm. if the wind came, it could blow those butts, too. Right. Uh, anyways, one day Brenner came in, in the morning and, you know, there were cigarette butts all around the ground. Now, I am a smoker. I'm not the only one. Whether it was the wind, but I always threw mine out. Whether it was the wind or whatever, other people smoked the same. I smoked camels, right? But there were camel butts on the ground. Was Brenner ever a cigarette smoker? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, he'd go in and out. Tattoo on his hand. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyways, guys, he came in. He just decided like those are all my butts, and he's fucking pissed about it. Before I get to work, and he takes all those butts put in the whole fucking ashtray brings it in and dumps the whole ashtray sand butts and all on my station holy shit just dumps it all and then leaves i show up like maybe running 10 minutes late for my noon appointment only to walk in and i've got a mountain of cigarette butts ashes and sand all over my but i got the message you know what i'm saying (laughs) and cleaned it up and set up you know um, but yeah, his story, the, that just reminded me, you know, shit like that happened to me. Yeah. That's crazy. I, I worked when I first moved here, <clears throat> I worked at a local shop that was nice enough to have me and, uh, they played pranks on each other all the time. And this one guy, I think he might've gotten a little too far. He like all of, they actually had booths like with the door on it and everything. He first, he wrapped up all of his tattoo machines in like tin foil. And then like hit them in different places and then like put like um, the gentian violets, like the stencil type of stuff in some of the gloves. So when he puts his hands in the gloves, you know, <coughs> comes out all purple. But then he filled his room up completely from the floor to ce- ceiling with balloons. So Gee. when the guy came in the next day, it was just like the worst possible timing. Like nobody knew it, but the guy had come from like a funeral and was late for his noon appointment. So... His appointment was already there, and the guy walks into that fucking room. So even after popping all the balloons, now his machines are fucking wrapped up in tin foil. The gloves are fucking purple. It was just a nightmare. My man. It's like, God, like dude, everybody that's... was just like watching him in shock. Like he's gonna just shoot the place up, you know? <laughs> Jeez, that's going. Oh, that's going. It was a bit. Out. It was a bit much. It was a bit much. That's man. when you walk in and punch him in his nuts real quick and run out. Right. Jeez. Right. Yeah. I walked into my same era. I walked into my booth and like Rob Williams and a bunch of dudes wanted to prank me. This was back in the day. I think maybe, you know, you, you know, back in the day, it seemed like, and Brenner did this to talk me. I would like 
collect my stencils and I take any of my references and tape them to the wall. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, anyways, which, you know, I quit doing cause, but anyways, these dudes all in the shop all took dick pics and printed off probably 30 different dick pics and taped them all up in my booth, all around the walls, my power supply. And I come into work and my walls are covered in dicks. Right. Now, was it in, like, did you notice off the rip or did it take a minute and you like glanced up and seen fucking penis? It took a minute because my walls were covered with art. Yeah. <laughs> and so they, it was like, where's Waldo, but where's dicks? And <laughs> so, yeah, the up. first one like slapped me in the face. I'm like, oh, damn. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> then I looked around, boom, there's another one. I'm like, oh, damn. I looked around, boom, there's another Like, in the, throughout the day, I just kept finding more dicks in my face, you know? <laughs> Man, when I worked at Newbreed, they were so big on pranking. We, uh, yeah. I guess it, you know this is stuff that nowadays everybody gets canceled over. But we like, you know, you get a. Um, we used to use like uh, before hustle butter, just like a tub of A and D ointment, right? Mm-hmm. We put a brand new tub of A and D ointment under a hot light, so it liquefied it. We pour all of that out, mm. put a dick pic at the very bottom, mm. pour <laughs> it back in, and now you just got the long con. You know, months Man. later when they're scraping the bottom <laughs> of the barrel. What the fuck? There's a you know there's a dick in here. <laughs> the long con, yeah. man. <laughs> they do. <laughs> they're going dick all out. They're planning it and setting it <laughs> right? waiting. They're just like, you know? Ooh, yeah, in a month, shit's gonna be funny. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so good. I I know that like what we do at our shop is a pet peeve for most shops. Um, so like, you know how they'll fucking there'll be a meme and it'll be like a piece of stencil paper. Um. <laughs> and it'll and be cut missing. out of the middle and shit yeah or the very yeah. top and it's like so you have to waste the rest we'll, we do that fucking you yeah. know because ultimately like it's fucking we'll just buy more but what i fucking hate yeah. is when motherfuckers open it from the wrong end because like there's a certain way it's perforated around to where the thermofax box yeah when yeah. you open it paper, yeah it it lends itself one yeah. on the right side so when you pull it you're not like pulling multiple sheets cuz they're yeah. each yeah. of the individual three piece um and people constantly fucking and that's just like a fucking kick in the nuts on a day where you're just trying to go. And right. like, I will have to stop doing it. I could be with a client talking whatever, and they got their fucking checkbook out ready to sign away a million dollars to me. And if I look over and I see that the stencil paper box has been opened wrong, I will just shut everything down and go straight to it. Retape up the box, flip Dang, it over, demonstrate good. to everyone that's in the common room with me the proper yeah. way to open a stencil box and then slam it down in the thing like a little child. Um, <laughs> it is such a fucking pet peeve. And I don't know if that's my OCD or just like productivity purposes. Yeah. And I almost feel like there's someone there and I don't know who it is, but they just do it because they know it gets under my skin. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was going to say it's probably on purpose. Uh, yeah. And then you can see when it's all – so it's unclean and someone will just be hanging out full dripping over and yeah – that yeah. bothers me when I see it as well, but not to the degree it does you. But that's some awesome. of my some of my pet peeves, especially ones that are from the shop. I try to like get solutions to, and like a big one for me is is whenever a client brings a bunch of friends or even one friend, and they want to talk with their hands, right? And they're moving everywhere, uh, you know. Mm-hmm. Or if they just mm-hmm. talk to you too much, like that, you know what I mean? Like it's great to talk to your client. I love the art of building relationships, but you know sometimes. This guy, this particular client is just like, just please shut up. Mm-hmm. Here's the answer. Take, yeah. your, take your reference picture or your stencil. Tape that shit right to his fucking face. <laughs> just be like, bro, I just, this is the perfect angle. I need you to hold still. <laughs> yeah, don't move. I remember we used to tell people that um, they couldn't use their phones because the frequencies interfered with our tattoo machines. To get them to like oh, stop talking on their phone. Brilliant. It works because they don't fucking know. You know what I mean? But uh wow. that is fucking brilliant. <laughs> yeah, totally. It works, man. I just I just uh stuck with a lot of the COVID rules. Like afterwards, like you couldn't bring anybody and all that. I just kind of keep those rules now. I love yeah. it. You know? Yeah. I like, think yeah, I got you can't, one of your you can't bring anybody. I, I think I've got one of yours, Matt. Um that 
that we share is that people, and I don't know, I, may, maybe we shared this one last time, but I don't think so. But like when the mic robbers, um, what I'm doing to you right now, <laughs> <laughs> and what I just did to Josh. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, the people that graduate themselves after lesson one. Oh, yeah. Mm, yeah. yeah. People that promote themselves or, yeah. Well, you know, like if I was to take, you know, I watched the recap of the first class that Josh taught and yeah. um, I come back in on the second class and I was just like interrupt and be like, hey, dude, chill. Like I can finish that tree for you um, <laughs> or fucking like, no, I, I know what Josh is about to tell you. Let me tell you, right. you know, yeah. like I've just I've known it all now because I've, yeah. I've watched the first class yeah. on it. You it's know, so oh my gosh. Gosh. people will just have full cups like, you know. And that's definitely a, a pet peeve. Something, so, uh, you know, one that I thought of when Josh was talking about with clients is, you know, like it depends on the person, the relationship, how I'm feeling that day, right? But we are in the people business and, you know, I love people, but I'm human and they can wear me out too. <clears throat> so something I realized is I'm not always a, big on just small talk and pleasantries because I feel like it's inauthentic people just going through the motions. Uh, now, Katie, you know, makes fun of me because like I am, highly aware of like how many people will make small talk it's really because they don't know what to talk about like people talk about the weather shit like that right anyways sometimes it's a pet peeve of mine when someone's trying to interview me if i'm not feeling like being interviewed and it's different than just asking me a couple questions versus like acting like they're conducting a whole interview and want to know my whole life story, everything when I'm trying to like focus, whatever you're trying to run a line, <clears throat> whatever the case <laughs> may be. And that's all okay. I'll roll with that until my, this leading to my pet peeve is when someone asks you a question, but does not give you the chance to really answer and is going to talk over you and ask you another before you got to answer the first one. So then you adapt and just go try and answer that. And they go and talk over you, take the mic back. <clears throat> you know, that's when all of a sudden I'm thinking like, I didn't even want this interview. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you ain't even like really listening to it and answered like this. I want to be like, this interview's over. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I cannot work in these conditions. Mm -hmm. That's right. <clears throat> yeah, man. Mm -hmm. You know how um, you said you still have some haters, right? You know, yeah. I think this is some pretty strong advice that I've recently learned. Mm. Uh, let's say you do a tattoo and you love it and you post it on social media, right? And you, you, you know, your friends and your, you know, and people are just like, hey, that's beautiful, Matt. Oh, I'm so happy to see you working again. You haven't posted a tattoo in a while and you're feeling good. And then, you know, because we all need that self-validation as artists. Yeah. And then you just get somebody that's just like, nice try. Keep trying, bro. <laughs> right. <laughs> and you're like, you're like to your soul, right? Like no matter, you have all these good comments and one guy is like, Man, so keep close. trying. <laughs> right so yeah so close so i have i have recently learned the 80 20 rule are you guys familiar with that yeah man i mean let's just break it down for the people that don't know about it seems pretty factual about 80 percent of people are just like me and you and uh we know generally good people we want to help people out do our best be nice whatever but mm -hmm. there's just 20 percent of people that are just fucking from another i don't know they're just not <laughs> like us yeah. And if you just kind of realize that, that they are out there, they exist, and stop yeah. taking it personally. So instead of right. when they say, keep trying, if you just go 20%, that's it. Really, it. <laughs> it just takes it off. Like, of like, like text 20% to them? No, well, you just know. Just think to, it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What do you say back to them, though? I to usually, I usually ignore them. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, sometimes I'll try to be, you know, funny or whatever or like i'll just come back with something nice like you know when i was when i had a, too <laughs> i had a gofundme set up when i was first diagnosed with cancer and everybody was really helpful and stuff and one guy wrote publicly super i remember nasty. this yeah you know I, I won't give you a dime you know you own you're a millionaire you're up in your mansion and you own an ink company and a machine company and i hadn't owned any of these companies for a long time um yeah. and i wasn't in a mansion and uh I wrote him, you know, I thought a lot about this, you know what I mean? And I wrote him a very nice, you know, thing back about how I hope to, I hope he never has to face anything like what I'm facing. But if he does, he better believe it that I will be there for him. And I, mm. and I, and I really meant it as well. You know what I mean? 
he mm-hmm. was like, damn it, you know, like it really, it got to him. He realized mm-hmm. how he was being and I explained to him how he was wrong. You know, <clears throat> I'm not sure why he thought I was this multimillionaire or any of this stuff. I didn't right. have insurance at the time. So my friends helped right. me out. Right. But, um, but yeah, it's just 80, 20, you know, 20% yeah. of people are just for whatever reason, they hate their own lives or whatever. And um, yeah. it just, it's, it's helped me, um, yeah. you know, to just not get so up in my head or if my wife, yeah. she's afraid to post her tattoos because she's afraid somebody's going to rip on it and she's yeah. pretty sensitive. But 20% yeah. of the people, they're just out there, yeah, man. Right, right. You know? Dude, I, I uh, did this fucking, um, oh, uh, I can't think of the guy that killed Medusa on a side, on a side piece of my buddy. And like, I still think it's a super fucking dope tattoo. Like it was a lot of my first round shader work and it was very multiple sessions and I did it in cool grays and then like some, I some remember light, this tattoo. Yeah. Yeah. Some like light yeah. greens and like, I love that tattoo. And then to finish it off, I just did a hot pink thick duct tape ass outline around the whole thing. And like, I remember that. Yeah posted the finished product and this dude was like it's all right except for that stupid red outline and it lit me on fire so i like went and seen who it was and he's not even an artist he's like some fucking mechanic or some shit um which everybody's got their own fucking opinions but i was like motherfucker it ain't even red it's hot pink and (laughs) i didn't say shit i think motherfucker (laughs) <laughs> I think I sent like a laughing emoji at it and just let it ride. And thank yeah. God, like none of my friends commented either. Cause that's the last thing I want is like fucking, um, the fucking wild and whites, West Virginia on my fucking yeah, Instagram the, page going yeah. down. But yeah. Cause man, sometimes your, your fans will fucking shred them way bad. Like, Oh man. And my, sometimes you know, in that 20%, then you can break down a 80 20 within the 20. <laughs> right. Yes. Out of that 20%, yes. then it's got its own 20%. That's even more yeah. 20. So some people you can be like, 20, 20, that motherfucker blind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I always he, say, I always just say in my head, I'm like 20% different species. This yeah. person is just not, they don't think like me, you know, because I, I, I remember I went through a phase where I was painting skulls a lot and somebody wrote, and actually, it was a, it was a person who had been really nice to me in several posts, but he was just like, "Oh, look at this, another skull, whoopty fucking do," you know. <laughs> and I was just like, "But did you see Damn. the texture, dog? But you got to try it animal style." I'm like trying anything I can do to make it better, you know. <laughs> My God, twenty yeah, percent, man. man. So you just it you, helps. You remember when you did a, a picture of Jesus? And then some dude from like Europe was like, that's not what Jesus looks like. He started a war on my feet. I didn't even engage. And he was like <laughs> bitching me out because my Jesus wasn't black. Right. Uh-huh. And then it started this whole deal. I think I just tried and just say, you know, just try and squash it all. Like, yep, this is just a rendering, you know, of an artist in a specific interpretation. We know that none of us really know what he looked like. We've gotten descriptions. And yes. Um, the descriptions I've heard, he could lend himself to be darker than the one I portrayed. You know, we weren't trying to be completely accurate, but if you've got a clear photo of him, please send it over. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. like, photo, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I had this woman come in the shop once and she was pissed because she couldn't get in right now. I was literally setting up to tattoo somebody and I had a client right after them. Super nice. I'm like, I'd love to tattoo you. I can't get you in right now flipped out just i don't know why stormed out of the shop and like by the door as she's leaving i've got a framed picture of at the time i thought was my best tattoo is a portrait of martin luther king Mm. and she goes let me guess this is your fucking work and i'm like it is and i'm I'm thinking maybe she's like i'll come back and she's like yeah that's probably what he looked like after he did and then just took off (laughs) (laughs) and i'm like holy shit man you know (laughs) And honestly, at the time, embarrassingly, I took that yeah. fucking picture off the wall. Oh, man. Because I was like, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So that's why today I do listen to that 80-20 rule. And it, again, yeah. I keep repeating myself, but if you struggle yeah. with some feedback like that, remember that. It's real. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Another good little tip of advice. This is we're changing the subject. This this podcast is all over the place, guys. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's but, always uh, like that, though. <laughs> If if you if I'm out with hip, right, and hip's got uh, a little bit of a something on his shirt, right, 
if hip can get if hip can fix that problem in five seconds, I'm going to call it out. I'm going to say hip, you got a little bit of catch up or something, you know. But if hip wore a stupid fucking outfit and he can't change it, and we're already in line to the concert, keep your mouth shut. Right. You know what I'm saying? So like, if your if your friend, you know, don't tell somebody that their dress makes them look fat because they are already wearing that dress. If she's got to fly away, you can fix her hair. Do that. It's just like, I don't know, little things like that that I think they can kind of go a long way. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Well, I appreciate that because now you're just pointing out something that can't be changed. But that reminds me of a fucking pet peeve I got, which is like, if I'm rocking a fucking booger, tell me that I have a fucking booger. Oh, yeah. Oh, I think (laughs) there's something in my teeth. Or if I got a white pimple that's like on the side of my head that I missed in the morning, (laughs) tell me. If somebody asks you if you want some gum, take it. <laughs> uh, I remember I was sitting on a church pew one day, and the dude sitting next to me like leaned over and like whispered something about kill me. We're in the middle of a church service. About what? He whispered something to me, and it just about he about killed me. Oh. So I reached in the inside of my suit jacket and pulled out one piece of gum and handed it to him and whispered back to him. Be set free. <laughs> <laughs> and I was really set myself free in case he was going to try and whisper again. <laughs> uh, so good, man. So good. Was that, uh, is that your list, sir? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Um, I'm, cool. I'm, I've been waiting f- to hear one of yours. I don't yeah. have any, guys. Really? No. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just that fucking non-offendable. <laughs> <laughs> no, we all do, you know. But, yeah, I mean, I think I, I brought a couple up, um, didn't I? Uh, but if let me see here. Um, well, here, I'll throw another one out real quick while you're do looking. It, do it. Fucking... I don't wear white shoes. I actually don't wear white, period. I actually don't wear anything, period, other than black for the most part. Occasionally, you'll see me stepping out in a little bit of color. And the reason is, is because, like, it's a day ruiner. Um, And I think I would look pretty good in, like, an all-white fucking jumpsuit um, or an all-white outfit. With white shoes. I actually admire people and like it when I see them do that. But, like, it's only good for the first wear. You know, someone had asked. They said, if you had the most money in the world, what would be something that you would, um, uh, like, selfishly spend money on or or do for the rest of your life? And someone said, like, never wear the same underwear or socks again. And I was like, damn, that's great. Yeah. So if... Katie brought that up. Katie said that. Yeah, it was some. I thought maybe it was the shop. It was something, but someone said that, and I'm like, I would totally do that. And I would wear white outfits and wear them once, like white tees. Mm -hmm. You can't wear a white tee because as soon as it washes, it's no longer that clean, pristine white that it is. And now it's starting to tint a little bit. And let alone if you put something white on or the sole of your shoe is white. And you scuff it like it just ruins me. It wrecks my day. I can't <laughs> stop looking at it. Like I just want to go home and change my shoes now. So I've just right. like surrendered to that's how it is if I wear that. So I just on all my shoes, if they're color, the sole of them is either gum or they're black or gray or like a dark color, but they're mm-hmm. never white. You know, a one pet peeve I would say if if I even threw it in a pet peeve is. People that are so quick to project <clears throat> their own limiting beliefs on you and try and rob you of your own journey and path for growth. You know, whether it's a student that decides to go out on a limb and sign up for Everything I Know by Joshua Carlton or sign up for TBM with us, right? And then you got people in their life that's never taken Josh or my class. I'm just using this as an example that wants to try and rob them and tell them, you know, why they go on the wrong way. Meanwhile, the people that signed up for our class are on their way to somewhere they have never been. Right. <clears throat> and you got people in their life trying to give them different direction. And it just blows my mind. How many people take directions from somebody that ain't never been where you're trying to go and ain't going where you're trying to go. 
right? Yeah. Now, we all have people in our life, even people that love us, and they want to keep you safe and don't want you to take risk, you know? <clears throat> so it's a mix of, of that with people that <clears throat> are quick to live in the conclusion with a full cup. They already know, and they know that this is no good for you. You shouldn't do it. Don't even try, right? It's a scam, whatever. Just robbing, trying to rob them from that, <clears throat> which leads me to an applicable quote, which goes like this. <clears throat> and I'm sorry, I don't know who to credit for this quote, but it goes like this. The highest form of ignorance is rejecting something you know nothing about. Right. Mm -hmm. The highest form of ignorance is to reject something that you know nothing about. You guys Which know this so about common. me. It is it's so common. Yeah. Yeah. It Humans really are weird, is. Man. Mm -hmm. We're weird. Yeah. And even on enrollment calls, sometimes people do that to themselves. Like yeah. we're having an enrollment call. This is where they're at in their life and their business. We know we can help them. We know the bottlenecks in their own business. We can see their own blind spots. We can see all the potential. You know what I'm saying? We know they're point A and want to get to point B. Um, <clears throat> and either they don't know the how or there's all the shit in the way. And that's where we come in, you know, uh, to help them with that. So even on enrollment call, someone may be quick to discount or qualify themselves. I can't do that. I'm not good enough. I can't learn what Josh is throwing down, whatever. And that's where we've got to hold space for them and stand for them that know you are good enough. You are worthy. You can learn this. And I see the good that you got the goods. I believe in you. Right. And sometimes I thank God for all the people that believed in me more than I believed in me. And sometimes our students have to borrow our belief about them until they rise to that higher place. And it's beautiful. But in that, you know, it's always scary to have breakthrough, to do something you've never done, to try and grow. It takes effort. It usually takes an investment, whatever. And you got all these, the rest of the world reserved and cynical on the sidelines, judging those of you who are actually in the game, trying to better yourself, investing in yourself. And you got people, loved ones on the sidelines, removed, cynical and talking shit. That's a pet peeve. Yeah, no, I totally agree with that. Like I get messages from people right after they sign up, they, they, they do the first class and they're just like, yeah. I'm so overwhelmed. Oh my God, I'm way in over my head. Yeah, What have I done? I don't know if I can do this. And I go look at yeah. their work and it's beautiful. Yeah, and It's like, yeah. who hurt you? Like what has happened to you to make you mm. doubt yourself so <clears throat> much? You yeah, know, because so I quickly. I, yeah, I don't say yes to everybody. I always look at their work and make sure that they're, you know, not brand new. They're going to be capable of, implementing sure. these new techniques and ideas yeah. and it blows my mind when these people get so down on themselves and it's like is yeah. your parents do this to you do your your peers like a mixture mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. limiting beliefs absolutely because mm -hmm. i definitely look for the potential you know mm -hmm. <clears throat> mm -hmm. it, and, and it's not a pet peeve that people have them because we all have them i oh, yeah. still have oh, them yeah. and i'm growing in my awareness to be able to even spot them so i can let them go when i realize that i'm even holding whatever limiting beliefs i still carry at this moment that's not the pet peeve the pet peeve for me is the people who a, a, a don't even want to aren't even open to it, even being a possibility or making fun of the guy who is open oh, and yeah. trying to hold you back it's like, look, if you want to fight to hang on to all your limiting beliefs, you can. You st you st and your reward is you get to keep them all. But don't fucking tell this guy over here uh, that he isn't worthy of trying to let go of some of his to grow, you know. Uh, and, you know, like a lot of pet peeves, at least at my experience, are are because of their things that I either used to do. So, like, you know, I used to, you know, be going down the street. Yeah, uh, and fucking see a fat person jogging, and I'm like, hey, "What's up, fatty?" Mm. You know, talking shit, and it's like, man, the more I've matured and grown, it's like, how dare I fucking yeah. ever fucking shame someone for doing something man. fucking yeah. to better themselves? Dude. And it's just a realization that I've had to come to. But like hearing that, like playing the devil's advocate or the naysayer in their ear, that really gets on my nerves. And it's like, oh, because you used to be that person. And and you were talking about it. And it reminds me like back to that local shop thing is like, there's so many people that I've reached out to um, 
and and ask them like, man, why don't you do shows? And they're like, yeah, but my mentor says it, like it's just bullshit and it's just a, a gimmick, it's mm. smoke and mirrors. Like mm. a lot of that shit that they show that they're doing at these conventions is all photoshopped and it's mm-hmm. magic, mm-hmm. Um, and you can't really learn nothing. So I'd rather right. just stay here. Perfect and work. example of their mentor almost robbing them of actually one stepping into their dreams if that's a desire of theirs. Mm-hmm. but robbing them of their own experience mm-hmm. to find out for themselves. They may go see the film and really appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. dude. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that's that's definitely a big one. You know, others on my list were bullies. You know, it's always been a pet peeve to me, you know, and that's and kind of... That's a pet peeve of mine, and it's like, because I used to be a bully. Mm. Yep. Man. I just demonstrated one aspect of that Mm -hmm. but see i was different i was the bully that was like also a pussy too so -hmm. like i would bully you until like i found the one not to fuck with and i jump on my bike and pedal down the street and turn Mm -hmm. around and be like your mom sucks dick and then they'd catch me and i'd take off riding a little bit further so (laughs) that was me (laughs) i don't know what i'm more impressed with but i'm definitely impressed that you can just sit here and uh, admit to all that. Oh, yeah. it, it, I'm not, I'm not, well, you know, it's like, you know, me and me and Matt's had talks and arguments and stuff about things like loyalty and stuff. And it's like, these are traits that weren't instilled in me or when they were, I just like, uh, with Josh's class, I heard them. I just wasn't ready to receive them. And it wasn't until like a catalyst of events got me to a point to where I needed to really start examining and fine tuning those and seeing that like, Oh, those are important things. You got to learn that. Cause like there's some characteristics and traits in me that like, I'm still going through that. Like Matt's just had in his blood forever, but vice versa. There's some things in me that I've had in my blood that he hasn't, but like I would almost be judgmental and say that, that what he was talking about was more important and I almost wish I had it, but I have to learn it now. And you would think like, this is something that you got to be taught. And I'm like, yeah, totally. Um, so yeah, I, I'm, if I think too hard on it, yeah, I could totally be ashamed of that. Um, almost even like saying like the, Hey fatty thing in the environment that we're in nowadays, it's like, that's super body shaming and that's wrong and that's negative. And I totally fucking agree. But 15 fucking years ago, I didn't give a fuck what you thought or who it offended right. and fuck you. And um, right. if you try to fight me, I just fucking run until you weren't looking and then come up and sucker punch you. <laughs> like complete cowardlessness mm. or cowardiceness. Right. Um, and that's cool because I would much rather be who I am today talking about the man I used to be um, than still being the man that I used to be today. Exactly. Exactly. It's beautiful. You know, you, you've grown. You've grown so much. Yeah, and you know, shout out to Chris Powell because he told us yesterday. Um, Chris Powell tattoos. He's the owner um, at Thousand Oaks in Center Springfield, Ohio, um, and he used to work at Aisle Nine. But he told us um, that uh, there's a good book to listen to, and it's John C. Maxwell, and the book is "Good Leaders Ask Great Questions." And I've been listening to it on the way up here, and there's a quote in it that I really fucking like, and it says. Um, Good questions equal um, transformation. This is going to need to be edited. I'm just going to stop here until I figure it out, and then we'll catch back up to it. So this part's edited. Um, good, good people or good questions equal fuck. I just had it before I started talking about myself. God damn it. Actually, let's not edit none of this. I want everyone to see this bullshit. Don't edit this, Mike. Um, God damn it. Motherfucker. Um, Hey, stay tuned for the next episode where I actually fulfill that quote to you all. (laughs) What a cliffhanger. This is better than that story. (laughs) To be continued again. (laughs) Leave them sitting on the edge of their seats. Uh (laughs) They're like, you know what a pet peeve is of mine? When you fucking do that stupid shit on the podcast and make me wait a week to hear it. Remember how we told you that you you guys were doing good work and life changing? Nah. Yeah, right. Nah. (laughs) (laughs) We celebrated too early. (laughs) I'm going in and out. Peace.
So good. So good. Yeah, another one of mine is uh, the people out there that just thinks everyone's racist. That's kind of a pet peeve. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, um, you know, another one, especially in business, but just in, again, small talk or uh, going through pleasantries. Sometimes if it ain't real, I'd rather you just hold it so I can get right to business. But, you know, I'm on a lot of Zoom calls, a lot of business calls with people all over. And people know kind of what me and my family have gone through. A pet peeve of mine is when I take a business call with somebody, he wants to start the Zoom call out with like talking about me and my wife and my family acting like he cares or is concerned or whatever. And then goes straight into like, you know, instead of just that short pause, like if someone's going to be like, Hey man, I'm really sorry to hear about whatever, whatever it, it, to make it believable to pause and let me at least acknowledge and be like, cool. Thanks. And then he can go on to business yeah. instead of yeah. just being like, hey, man, I'm really sorry to hear what you and your family have been going through. But anyways, today I was calling because I, I want to talk about blah, blah. Can I get a cigarette? Even fucking, you know, and it's like, man, you could have just left that off and just been like, hey, man, my reason for the call today. But don't go through pleasantries acting like you don't even fucking, you know what I'm saying? To yeah. me, that shit's a pet peeve. Now, other people are like, man, that's just someone being nice and doing pleasantries. I'm like, you can keep that, yeah. you know. <laughs> I feel like it's pretty obvious when I'm on a phone call with you and I'm like, we've kind of talked about what we're supposed to talk about. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. And OK, I'll see you next week. And I'm like, clearly ready to get off the phone. And then yeah. they just kind of start reiterating what we already talked about. Thank like just you. Just saying it another way. And I'm like, uh, that's right. God damn, I just want to get off the fucking phone. We, you know? yeah, dude. Ugh. And then they're going to reconfirm it one more time in wrapping it up. They're going to say yeah. it a third time. Okay, so then I'll see, I'll call you Tuesday <laughs> at <laughs> two, right? Mm. And you're like, Ugh. <laughs> Guys, a good question is informational. A great question is transformational. There. Oh, thank bro. God I fucking got that out. And Say I've been it like, again. A good question is informational. A great question is transformational. Come on. So basically, it's like the keeping, being cognizant of the questions you ask and making sure they're good ones. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. But yeah, Love the long it. trail to I had to get that out, dude. Or I was going to lose it again. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, a motherfucker that just won't hang up and it's like, uh, uh, uh. or funny. or if they fucking call you and um, or oh, they'll call me and then I'll miss the call. Five minutes later, I'll call them back and I'm like, hey, what up? And they're like, what's up? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what the fuck's or, up? <laughs> what about what about you somebody- me? Somebody calls me and I miss it. I call them right back and they fucking threw their phone in the goddamn ocean, apparently. Like, you just <laughs> called me. <laughs> like, you're playing tag. You know, they're like, I better call my boy Josh. Oh, not him. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> I always text them. I'm like, tag, you're it. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's funny when I call someone, they hit the fuck you button or they don't answer and immediately text back, what'd you want? And I'm thinking, yeah. to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> what about. What about, um, God damn it, hip, now you're making me forget shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, what about the texters, right? They text you instead of like, hey, Matt, are we doing the podcast at the same time, blah, 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 in one text. It's like, hey, Matt, send. Yeah, right. Like, send. <laughs> and it's just constantly. And I'm like, um, hey, guys, oh, yeah, I'm fucking dude. quitting. <laughs> right, dude. <laughs> or, or like yeah. trolls on social media, they'll make a post and they're like, "Oh my god, I can't believe that just fucking happened." I'm over oh, today. I fucking hate. Cryptic and then that's Facebook. all they say. <laughs> oh, vague, vague looking. Yeah, what a horrible day. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> right. <laughs> Then don't fucking post it. Oh, yeah, right. Dying of fire. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> that was a little um, harsh. In the tattoo industry, especially back in the day, another kind of funny, maybe pet peeve to me, or another one that was just weird, was running into piercers that I, before I knew they were a piercer, took themselves so seriously. Oh my god! Acted the like they were like the know-it-all and the, maybe the most important person in the room that would make me start <laughs> oh, to yeah. wonder who is this guy? And then I found out <laughs> it's the piercer. Like, oh. How do you know if someone's a piercer? <laughs> <laughs> They'll fucking let you know. 
<laughs> the same way if you want to know if someone's a vegan. Yep. Oh, God, a vegan piercer? Jesus. Oh, Jesus. shoot me. The world would implode. Uh, now, I haven't encountered one in years, but I remember, especially a decade ago at different shows, man, them piercers, boy, they were serious. You know? Oh, yeah. Dude, I had one chastising me um, low key fucking in, in Vegas or Vegas, um, Cincinnati. Yeah. It was across the aisle from yeah. us yeah. Um, because, like, I wrap my fucking vape up when I tattoo at conventions. And I hit that shit. Um, but <laughs> I wrap it up to where it's like not contaminating nothing. And I, I don't fucking like dip it in my fucking ink cup or fucking wash my vape out in my fucking rinse cup, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I hit that shit and I wrap it with fucking, uh, proper fucking wrapping border, <laughs> uh, barrier film. And like the whole time, like people keep coming people from tbm and shit are like man what's up with the chick across the the aisle and i'm like what do you mean and they're like they're just she's just dogging you out she keeps saying shit like clean up on aisle nine cross contamination <laughs> and i'm thinking like geez bitch fucking chill out i know what the fuck i'm doing right, right. um but it was just like going into that like you know, piercers are the fucking clean Nazis of the industry, which, you know, that's cool. Um, <laughs> it is. It's, yeah. yeah. But sometimes how they want to convey their message can be a little like, whoa, damn, dial it back, Daryl. Right. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah. I, I use gloves sometimes and fucking. So what if I reuse a needle here and there? Like, right. They were married. Right. <laughs> uh a huge pet peeve of mine is religion and religious folks. Oh, yeah. You know, just fucking the Debbie Downers of the world or the uh, fear mongers. Man, know. I can't believe that one hasn't came up fucking. Yeah. <clears throat> Jesus. Yeah. You know, it's funny on my list. Uh, road rage is on my list of yeah. a pet peeve. <laughs> uh, but not going to that religious one. Oh, dude, that would we could talk 10 episodes on that. But just religious people, how like. Religion has caused so much harm mm-hmm. to the world, even today. And, you know, or like, you know, I used to say things like I used to as a joke, I'd be like, man, I really feel sorry for God. He's got so many poor reps mm-hmm. out there just misrepresenting. You know what I'm saying? It's a big pet peeve. It was a pet peeve, I believe, of Jesus. The only people he had a problem with were the religious. Right. Mm-hmm. Um and uh, yeah, I still think it's uh, religion is one of the most damaging things that you know has hit mankind. Uh, yeah, there's the a lot of damaging <laughs> things that hit mankind, but it's how we respond to react to it. But man, that's a big pet peeve of mine. You know, even someone like myself that would consider myself uh, spiritually open, a seeker. You know, <clears throat> the more we know, the more we realize how much we don't know. Right. Mm-hmm. But again, back to the people that are so quick to speak in absolutes and draw conclusions, right? And religious folks that are going to try and project on you. This is it. This is all there is. And you're either in or out, right? With a dualistic mentality as such a pet peeve of mine. Because it, to me, it's another form of a bully robbing someone else of their own journey for truth. If Out of fear. Yeah. I, I, that's funny. This the, I remember... Um, Maybe six years ago, I, I went and was getting blood drawn, and the phlebotomist like uh, was like, "Okay, take your coat off." And I took my coat off and like revealed all this sin on my skin. And um, <laughs> she kind of got kind of cocky with the fucking trinket and shit, and kind of like slapped it off and shit. And she was, she asked me like, well, "What's your mother think?" She didn't give any description of what she was. Ta- I knew what she was talking about. Yeah, yeah, right. And the first thing that went through my head was like, "Well." Bitch, <laughs> um, I'm a fucking grown man, and I don't give a fuck what my mom thinks. But I replied like, "Well, she loves me." Yeah, and then she just never had any more conversation with me after that. But I just remember thinking like, "Damn, like I'd hate to be in your fucking family." I guess that I would just be kicked out of the fucking. Dude. I don't know if you remember this, and that always. Women like that. How many times in the tattoo shop did a young girl come in? She's all excited. She's getting her first tattoo. It's usually like a little cross on her wrist or forearm. But she's got her religious aunt Susie with her. 
just being a stick in the mud, condemning her and judging her all the way to my chair. I'm already thinking like, damn, why'd you even come, right? Mm -hmm. And But anyways, back then, me and Steve Olive, who was my assistant at the time, who's also like a theologian and real What's versed. That mean? Someone that studied theology. Okay. Uh, uh, well versed in the Greek and the Hebrew and those scripture and stuff like that. And he's covered in, in tattoos and there are people like religious aunt Susie here <clears throat> always pulls one verse out of scripture to use as an ammo to beat you down. And they'll say something like it says, it says thou shalt not tattoo yourself. Right <laughs> yeah. now, first of all, anyone that's using that verse, no one ever knows where the fuck it's at. Right. I'll ask, <laughs> you know, but number two, well, and then it goes even further too, because I think they say Jesus has King of King, Lord of Lords on his, like his leg or something, right? Like he yeah. might have been tattooed, <laughs> right? I don't know. I, I don't and know. I don't, but... Yeah, and I don't know that. I can't be, speak to that uh, with any certainty. What I do know is that scripture that no one knows where it's at. The ones that are using it as ammo on you, because I know where it's at. One, it's under the law. It's in the Old Testament. So this is a whole nother can of worms. But it was specific to a specific group of people. And at the time, people were taking rocks and carving out like false idols in their flesh. And that's all that verse. He was talking specifically to the Hebrews like, hey, guys, you probably shouldn't do that. Right. It was for the Jewish people. So already, if you're not Jewish, you're already exempt. Right. <laughs> but. It wasn't even talking about the tattooing that we do today, and it wasn't even talking about having a tattoo. It was your reason for getting it, and they were tattooing themselves and carving in false idols, and that's when he stepped in. It's like, might not be the best plan. But ultimately, why people carry it into the day and want to condemn you for it just shows you how much of God they have not been taught in their heart. Back to what Josh was saying, if someone's already got the dress on, you're already at the show. Even if you think it's not a good look on them, why bring it up? You've already got the fucking tattoo. Who the fuck are you, right? Mm -hmm, uh, exactly. You know, a, a similar deal. <clears throat> so anyways, since I'm pretty versed in a lot of scripture, I'd always try and help turn that person and bring that religious Aunt Susie to a place where she can honor what's about to happen here and we can celebrate and accept what's happening here or I'll check them or whatever, somehow to protect my client who I feel is the victim in this situation by this abuser over here who's Bible thumping them, right? Um, and so I'll stand up for him. But so, and so anyways, I took Steve Olive in the one scripture verse, and it's Leviticus uh, 1928 or something. It's uh, in Leviticus. And I took that whole scripture verse and blasted it on his throat. The one verse that says, Thou shalt not tattoo is Leviticus 19.28. Did a whole throat piece on him, right? And he's real well versed. So when that religious Aunt Susie with his hair, we pretended to be on her team. That's right. It does say that in the scriptures. It does say that in the Bible, don't it? Where, where does it say that at? And she's <laughs> like, no, I don't know, but I know it says it in there somewhere. And, and Hip's playing along, or Steve's playing along. He's like, you know what? I think... I know where it is. And he opens, shows her his throat. And he's like, it's Leviticus 19, 20. And you just watch her head explode. You know what I'm saying? Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. It's good shit, man. Fun, fun. Well, this was light. Yeah. This is a fun, light one. Yeah, man. I can dig it. I need brothers like you in my life to remind me to keep it light from time to time. But your presence alone helps me do that. You know? mm. mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Want to take us out, Matt? Sure. You, you always got the uh, catchy ending. Yeah. Because <laughs> like I, I like look forward to hearing it because like I, I, you know, we're... For our listeners, I feel like we're getting to a point now where we're kind of working like a a, a live band, and then we're in a right. jam session, and like I can kind of feel like when someone's about to like fucking do a build up and then drop off, um, but I can never think anything cool to say. And Matt, you always end it the best. I think great, no pressure. Yeah, <laughs> don't you think, Josh? Absolutely, fucking I love I love this part, man. Bring that <clears throat> Del Taco home. 
Come on, brother. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. Tattoo Guardian is sponsored by Del Taco. Yeah, that's right. If you don't know, now you know. <laughs> their, slogan, hey. their slogan is, uh, it's I. <laughs> <laughs> when Taco Bell's closed, uh, Del Taco. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listeners, we love and appreciate that you're on this journey with us and listening today faithfully like you do every week and like Josh brought up earlier. Uh, for you guys to message us and even today to go back to DM on Instagram and send us DM us voice messages. And even again on today's topics in the wide array of things we cover just for fun. Uh, maybe you got to see a different view of all of us uh, not being so serious. Um, side note, I want to take a moment to acknowledge all of you who personally wrote me. Uh, I needed to hear it to acknowledge and confirm me for the uh, vulnerability it took for me to share my story. And you guys know that was vulnerable. Those of you that received, those of you who commented, those of you who took the time just to let me know that you see me uh, means the world. We just love and appreciate all of you so much. And we're going to continue to serve you with our whole hearts. We love this. We love you guys. Uh, we don't take this lightly. Um, and there ain't, really a whole lot you can do about it we're fucking in this we're gonna keep showing up every week for you thanks for meeting us right here we'll see y'all next week